We are chatting it up with Twins pitching prospect Matt Cantorino on today's episode of Locked On Twins. You are Locked On Twins. Your daily Minnesota Twins podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Quickly. Here's his next pitch. Here's a Wisconsin catcher. 1-1 pitch. And Kale swings and misses. Reno winds up. And here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. And a meek effort at that from Kale. And welcome to the Locked Up Minnesota Twins podcast. Today is Thursday, December 16th. I'm your gracious host, Nash Walker. So excited to have Matt Cantorino on today with us, Twins pitching prospect. Matt, how are you? How's the winter going so far? Doing great. You know, it's uh, been a fun off season so far. Definitely looking forward to the next season, though, whenever it happens. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. A lot of questions for you. Eager Twins fans looking for anything, uh, but really excited to hear from you. Absolutely. And I think the biggest question, bringing one to the top, is just how you felt about 2021. Uh, on the mound, exceptional injuries. How do you look back on 2021 now? Oh, can you hear me? Sorry. Yep. Yep. All right. Sorry. Uh, can you? I, I I cut out for a second. Can you? Oh yeah. Sorry. You might have, you might have cut out there. Just how you felt about 2021? Oh yeah. It was a uh, 2021 was definitely an up and down season, but it was definitely like it was still like a really great experience. I would say overall. Uh, I would say the best part about it was that um, I felt I still felt like I was developing um, along the way. I had a uh, so I pitched for the first month of the season and then I went down with an injury um, and uh, and that injury was elbow tendonitis, nothing surgical or anything, but that definitely did put a damper into some plans uh, to say for the rest of the year. Uh, it took a little bit longer to come back from it than I would have liked, but like I said, I, I did feel like I was developing along the way. There was some goals I had set for myself and there's some goals that the Twins had set for me as well to try to reach when I was on the mound. And when I was on the mound, I was hitting those goals. And so that was uh, so that was probably the most encouraging thing for me. Some things are definitely a little bit out of my control, but it was a uh, like I said, definitely like pitching well when I was on the mound and healthy, and hitting like these goals that I came into twenty twenty one with. Like despite being having missed three months of past of the last season, um, I mean that was a huge win for me, and I think it's all systems go for twenty twenty two. Absolutely. And Twins fans were super excited last offseason. Video posted of you. I think you were touching 99 or 100 in an offseason video. And it was exciting because, you know, scouted as like being polished out of rice, right? And then you add velocity. How did you use 2020? And Dave asked this question too. But how did you use 2020 to increase your velo? And what were the Twins working with you on during that downtime? Yeah, a lot of it honestly just came down to the fact that you weren't having a full season's load worth of pitching. So you could direct a lot of that other energy into other areas such as the weight room or um, we have a great like uh, uh, we have a great like a uh, we, so we have a great strength and conditioning staff. And we also have a great like a uh, physical therapy staff as well, and they can address the movement deficiencies that you have. So a lot of the energy that could have been spent, you know, traveling and staying healthy and staying durable for a long season ended up being able to be put into that sort of stuff because you were in one spot for a little bit longer than you thought. And, and then it was, I, I felt really fortunate to have access to a lot of resources, like in my hometown during that time, I know some people didn't. And then I, I, I just stuck with what I, I just stuck with what they gave me. And I think it was kind of a perfect storm a little bit. Some things came together and then uh, that uh, resulted in um, a few steps forward. And then I think the other thing is just like, uh, in college, it was just a lot, a lot of at time. I had a lot of time and energy put into, into class and stuff as well. I was a mechanical engineer and I, I, I was, I was very much splitting time almost between like school and baseball. So it was like some of these things now that are very doable and seem like I want to do like addressing like my movement deficiencies, my movement deficiencies and stuff like that. And seeing like what I really need to do to make my body the best it can be. What seemed like a burden in college is now something I'm just jumping after. And I think that kind of came together and paved the way for me to make some improvements that, um, 
that maybe w- weren't seen by scouts while I was in college? Matt's modest, but Matt had a 4.0 GPA at Rice as a mechanical <laughs> engineer. Um, I'm a journalism major at Mizzou, so it's a little bit of a different uh, curriculum. That is <laughs> absolutely uh, unbelievable to pitch and then uh, do that one well school. I do want to ask you about that. When did you decide as you were at Rice, you know, pitching, going to school, when did you kind of decide, like, I want to play baseball and, and, you know, I'm willing to see what the next steps are with that? I think uh, baseball was always number one for me ever since I, uh, ever since I, well, I mean, I picked up a bat when I was five and I thought I was going to be a hitter for a little bit, but <laughs> <laughs> that didn't quite work out. But, uh, but I mean, I've always loved the sport. It's always been a passion of mine. And once I started proving to myself, like, oh, hey, I'm, I might be pretty good enough. Like once I started s- staying healthy in college and accumulating innings and seeing like, oh, this is for sure uh, like a possibility for me. I never looked back then. It wasn't, it wasn't really a question of like me deciding, like, this is something I maybe want to do. It's just the opportunity presented myself and I just kind of ran with it, I would say. So Corey asks, Matt, what have the, have the twins told you about expectations for 2022 or what's your standing now in terms of where you'll start or what you know of that? Um, everything that the twins have told me says that like, even though like the 2021 was, uh, I don't want to say derailed, but was, uh, kind of, uh, stalled a little bit by injuries. Um, they said everything that I've been doing development wise, I'm still very much on track to help the team in the future. Like, uh, I'd like to think so at least. So it's like, that'll have an opportunity to continue to do that. And I think the main thing that will, um, help that come to fruition is me staying healthy and me coming back and being healthy. So that's the number one priority that we're setting forward for uh, 2022 is just everything that we've done, like taking our time with the rehab process this past year and also um, being uh, not conservative, but being making sure that everything I'm, ch- I'm checking boxes along the way within my rehab uh, process um, that I st- um, that I've kind of gone through so far is uh, very much geared to making sure I have as normal of a 2022 as possible, where it's not that I'm being built up, but like that I am that I am developing and that I am getting good innings to be able to uh, show what I can do. For those who have not seen Matt pitch, uh, super excited to next year, I'm sure. But Matt brings like this energy to the mound uh, that has <laughs> definitely been like something that's been discussed and like posted videos of where does that energy come from Matt when you're out there competing? I think I just love the game. I, I mean, I, 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 it's a, I, a lot of people say it doesn't really, uh, I, I think I'm a, I'm, I'm a competitor. A lot of people say that they don't really see it in my personality off the field. Like I'm a pretty uppy person, but like not as much of like a, like kind of like just zero regard of necessarily for what's going on, but it's like, uh, I don't, it's not that I don't have zero regard for what's going on out there, but it's just, I'm having fun. I'm having fun and I'm trying to keep my, uh, I'm trying to keep my team in the game and I'm trying to keep myself in the game and I'm trying, and I think that's one of the easiest ways for me to do it. You know, well, we go out there and you play, uh, uh, I mean, like this past year is a, what was it? A 120 game schedule. I don't even remember what it was. Uh, but I mean, in a full, in a full season, it's 140 games for minor leaguers, you know, why not have a little bit of energy and make that, like make my start day. I'm, I'm pitching once a week. Why not make that uh, start day have a little bit different energy than some of the other games in the week? Keep the team involved. I, I think my teammates appreciate it a little bit too. But I, I, I think it's, it's as, mostly as, me uh, just having yours. fun. <laughs> Definitely appreciate it from uh, the fans too. But Matt, another Matt asks. Has I'm curious about this too. He asks about your approach for whiffs and getting swings and misses. But I'm curious to hear from you if that's changed now that you do have you know, increased velocity and your stuff may be a little bit sharper than it was a year and a half or two years ago? Um, I would say from a philosophy standpoint, is like how I go for swings and misses is that I, I try to, I just, a lot of my legwork in being able to get a lot of swings and misses came from the pitch design process where I've developed a repertoire that can get swings and misses. And so like my fastball, my slider, my changeup in particular, those are the three pitches I use for the most part in two, uh, in 2021 when um when i pitched and uh so a lot of the legwork in getting swings and misses my approach came from making those go together as well as they can so that they play well off each other and then if i just throw it in the strike zone 
I'm going to have a good chance to get a swing and a miss. And that's ultimately been the main focus is just throwing good pitches um, um, in the strike zone and just trusting my stuff because I, I'd like to put, think I put enough work in that my stuff is really good and is able to get swings and misses. What are your goals? I know you mentioned health. What are some other goals you have for 2022? Um, 2022, I mean, it's like, it ultimately comes down to staying healthy. You know, I want to give myself the best shot I can. And I think like, uh, a lot of the work, um, is just getting my body in as good of condition and ready to with, um, stand, uh, the ups and downs of a full season. And it's not like I haven't done it before. I threw a hundred innings each year that I was in college. Um, so it's, it's, uh, I, so I threw, yeah, I threw close to 300 innings in college. So it's not like I haven't accumulated a workload before. It's just making sure I'm able to bounce back from something like this and stay on top of things and be able to, and be able to give myself, myself the best chance to succeed out there. Because I, I mean, I, I, I want to think that I, 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 with the success I had in limited reps this year, I want to think that I can sustain that over a full season. Ryan Carp asks, who's the best hitter you face in the minors, Matt? <laughs> in the minors. Uh, well, in the minors, um, I'm trying to think. In I guess we could extend that to Rice, too, if yeah. you want to extend it. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's one of those things where it's like it's tough to – so Matt Walner actually had my number in college. That's a different story. <laughs> but I would say like one of the coolest batters I faced was I, I faced Kyler Murray in high school, the, f- wow. the football player. If, if you remember that, well, see, he was from uh, Allen, which is right next to my high school, like 40 minutes away. So we played him in like an intro squad and I got to pitch against him a couple of times. I struck him out, but, oh. but, <laughs> but I mean, obviously he's not a baseball player anymore. So I don't think he, I don't think he, uh, he'd care very much that I, that I said that. That is awesome. Yeah, he's uh was watching him on Monday night. That's super cool. Chris uh wants to hear you talk about the Toy Story Pez dispenser. Is that I don't know anything about this. Is that a uh oh, it's okay. superstition or is that a just kind of a keepsake? Uh it was something that started in 2019. So my pitching coach uh, uh so I, so uh in 2019 with the Twins and uh so just uh it it worked out that like uh I I said howdy all the time. Just, I don't know, for some reason, I just, uh, my introduction be <laughs> howdy, nice to see you. So it was, my pitching coach uh, started calling me Woody, like, uh, like, uh, like from Toy Story. And um, what ended up happening is I, I, I ended up getting a Woody Pez dispenser. So I, I just kept him in my back pocket and I bought uh, like a five pound bag of Pez. And then I would just, and then through the game, I would just hand out Pez in the dugout to anybody who wanted them. And I would do that every game. And I, did that for all of 2019 after I was drafted and then would have, and then would have done it in 2020 and then did it all this year as well. So, and um, Woody also got a friend this year, Buzz uh, Lightyear also. <laughs> I also have a Buzz Lightyear uh, Pez dispenser. So I have a, so if you ever catch me on a day that I'm not pitching, uh, Woody will be in my left pocket and uh, Buzz will be in my right and they'll be filled with Pez throughout the game. That is awesome. I'm sure the dugout appreciates that, Matt. Yeah. Lukewarm plays. Is curious what velocity do you think you could touch out of the bullpen? Oh, uh, I, I mean, like you said, I at my best I was able to um, flash upper nineties, like like you said in the video that circle circulated around a little bit. Um, past spring training, I was able to hit upper nineties as well when I got some time with uh, on the big league side of things, and um, and I'd like to think that that number is still very much attainable. I'm feeling very healthy. I'm feeling very, very strong. And I think like I could, I, I think you might be able to see like a 98 or a 99 if, uh, um, if everything clicks and that's not necessarily out of the bullpen. I think that could happen out of a starter's role as well. It's just one of those things where you just got to put it together. And if it's one of those days, then, then we'll see what happens. Has there been any chatter, Matt, about like any stints out of the bullpen this year, or maybe just to like, get innings or get up quicker? Has that been something that you've been approached about? Um, you know, uh, not, not necessarily. It's, uh, I think, uh, I I've been doing really well, like in a starter's role when I've gotten innings, like I haven't had any issues, uh, maintaining my stuff through innings before. I think the ultimate goal is to have me as a starter, but I, uh, 
but I do know that the re- I got some bullpen innings in um, spring training um, in 2021 uh, um, in order to help acclimate me to acclimate me to that role in case I was needed, like maybe later down the stretch. If, if, um, but obviously 2021 turned out in a way different than most Twins fans would have liked. But like, so that kind of nixed that idea after the season kind of got rolling that way. But that was kind of thrown out there was maybe get him some work right putting the legwork right now to get him some reps and down the line if he's still pitching well we'll see how that goes obviously the twins uh didn't pitch very well in 2021 and i think an exciting and hopeful factor for twins fans is that people like you are coming you know there's a a great group they feel like and i think a lot of fans feel like that is close what have you seen from some other twins pitchers you've been around cole sands louis varlin um, other guys you've seen as you've made your way up? Um, I would say a lot of it is that uh, they're obviously putting the work in the weight room. They're putting the work on the mound. They each have their own individual goals, but I think a lot of these guys are also really prioritizing something that the twins have been more heavily promoting like uh, this past year or two are like, what are your movement deficiencies? Like even if you're completely healthy right now, and even if you're having success, like are there any movement deficiencies that you're having that we can maybe address like how can we get you to transfer energy better through your um through your motion and like how can we get you to throw more efficiently even though even if you're having a bunch of success and even if you're having um even if even if you're completely healthy but is there anything that we think like might affect you later down the line that we can address right now is there any way that we can um is there still meat left on the bone that we can that we can take and I think a lot of those guys that you mentioned, like Louis in particular, even uh, Louis Varlin in particular, that's like, um, that's something that's like really helped him take another step forward. Is that he's 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 just a beast. He's uh he, he's just a beast, and it's just like he's embraced that, and it's helped him out a lot. You're from Texas. I'm from Minnesota. What was what was your react? Give me your genuine reaction to to thinking about pitching in Minnesota in April when you were drafted. <laughs> oh, I wasn't thinking about it too much. I was just, I was, uh, I was on cloud nine. Like I was just hot, happy to get an opportunity. Um, I've had a, uh, I, I was, I, I pitched in Cedar Rapids a little bit this uh, past spring. So like definitely not Minnesota coal, but definitely not the warmest place either. So it's like, <laughs> I'm getting slowly acclimated and I don't think it's as bad as a lot of people make it out fortunately like i'm a sweater so like if i once i get moving like my body is on my body's hot so it's it's like it, it it's a it it's not the worst thing in the world but it, it definitely it's definitely different than pitching at 100 degrees i can tell you that much so you're in you're in texas now you're back home for the off season yes sir i'm currently in houston awesome are you planning on like a regular spring training are you planning to report are they are they giving you any details about that amid the uh the mess <laughs> uh i recently found out my report date i'll be heading back to uh i'll be heading back to um so i'll be heading back to fort myers on january 17th which is definitely sounds a little bit early but it's like uh that's uh with the minor league guys i'm not affected by the lockout that is uh currently happening uh but uh a lot there's going to be some minor league guys that are brought up there to either go through some camps to help address uh like um to help put on velo or to help command or anything like that i think mine is more to get eyes on me and to make sure that i as i get off the mound as i start to get off the mound again that i'm all systems go for 2022 like a lot like i kind of alluded to um earlier a lot of the stuff that's been done with the rehab process towards the end of 2021 and currently is to make sure I had as normal of an off season as possible. And I could just build up like normal and be ready to go for 2022. Are you throwing at all now? Or are you just kind of. Yep. Uh, I'm throwing. I'm, I'm throwing currently. I'm throwing five times a week. I'm throwing pretty much a full distance to what I would normally throw when I'm healthy. It's just pretty structured right now. Like I have, I have like the number of throws laid out for me, how far I'm supposed to throw each day. And I then I'll be getting off the mound for the first time come the new year. How do your uh, how do your parents react to watching you pitch? Because I always know my dad would say to me like I would never be able to watch you pitch. Uh, 
in professional <laughs> baseball? Um, um, my dad is a, my dad's a, a baseball junkie. So he, anytime he gets to, um, watch me throw, he's elated. And honestly, that's true with, um, kind of my whole family. I've made a little bit of baseball fans out of them all. It's a, they all like, um, coming to watch me pitch. They definitely get a little bit anxious whenever I'm out there for sure. Like every baller, they're feeling every baller strike out there with me. But, um, I, I think they're, they're all, um, they're just excited to see me pitch again. I can tell you that much. Sean would like to know your reactions. I didn't see them. Uh, I don't know if you did, but I, I think you were on a podcast. He mentioned, but your fan graphs pitch grades, what were your reactions to those? Oh, I have no idea what my fan graph pitch, my <laughs> fan graph pitch grades are. I'm sorry about that, but I do remember the interview that was in the midst of the pandemic. That was in 2020. Like that was, uh, so that was, right during it all. And I think a lot of it had to do with the development. A lot of that interview had to do with the development of my changeup. Cause that was, uh, the 2020 off season. Uh, Oh no, that was before the 2020. That was before 2020 spring training. That was pre COVID. Wow. It was, uh, Different like, it was that. like January or February of like 2020. I'm pretty sure. And it was like right before I reported for spring training. And it was after I had been working on my changeup for a, a little while, and uh, and a lot of it was geared towards like what was my uh, what was my practice for pitch design, and like how did that work out, and like how it was going. So my ch this is the 2021 was the first year that my changeup really became like a solidified pitch for myself. I got a lot of swings and misses with it. I was throwing it for a lot of strikes and still uh still working on getting it to be the best it can be but it's definitely showing like really good potential and something that i need to keep involved and so uh definitely just uh it, it, so if i had to guess what his question was about it was probably about the change up then so i'm feeling really happy about the change up it's <laughs> definitely uh it's definitely uh a really good pitch for me this past year and it's not going anywhere i can tell you that much that is awesome you know, a lot of times the biggest thing you hear about, like, especially right-handed pitching prospects, I think, is developing the changeup. Got to get lefties out. Um, I think that's what we hear a lot. Your buddy Evan is curious how your ping pong game is. Did you play a lot over <laughs> the uh, the pandemic, or have you been in the ping pong room? Uh, so Evan, he was a buddy from Rice. We played baseball together. He's currently in pro ball as well with, uh, with the Reds organization. But I think what he's referring to is – he was just one. I think he just wanted me to bring up how many times I, I beat him in ping pong in college, because I was way better than him. I act, I'm actually I'm actually a little bit worse than I was now. I haven't been playing as much, but I can tell you this much: uh, at Rice, we maybe didn't have like a a winning record all three years I was there. But if there was a national seed, uh, if there was a national seed for ping pong teams, we probably the Bryce baseball team would have been up there. We would have been we would have been top ten in the country. I can tell you that much. When we did played you a lot. To, sorry, what were we gonna say? Or we just played a lot of ping pong in, in college. Yeah, practice makes perfect with pong too, for yeah. sure. When did you start to hear from the twins or just from teams when you were at Rice? Um, I started to hear from uh the twins. I went through so there was like a general like meet and greet process with a lot of different scouts from the area and the twins were a part of that. I didn't know that the twins were as heavily in as me until I got drafted by them, honestly. So um they were kind of an under the radar team and uh and I, I really enjoyed my interview process uh process with uh Greg Runzer. He was the the scout that ended up drafting me. Um so I really enjoyed my interview process with him. I was like, oh, I would have loved to be, I would love to be a twin. And, but I didn't really think too much about it. And then all of a sudden during draft day, got a call five minutes before I was drafted to say, hey, you're going to the twins. And I said, okay. And then that was pretty much it. That's awesome. I want to get to some more of these questions. Uh, people are excited to, to hear from you. So who do you think, this is from Keaton, and maybe you don't have a, a pure answer for this, but who do you think you resemble delivery stuff wise? in the majors oh like pitch mix wise or maybe or maybe like uh just like who do i oh, where do i get like my delivery from because i know people say i have a little bit of i have a little bit of a weird hitch in my delivery and stuff like that yeah maybe a mix i of guess two. all right yeah so uh 
I don't know. So like, I I can see it sort of, but this is definitely not who I, uh, uh, who I got it from or anything like that. It was, so the way I got my hitch and my delivery is, is kind of, I, I pump up my legs and my hands in unison. That's the hitch pretty much right before I deliver. And, um, I got that, um, from like a camp I went to in high school and it was like, it came from like a drill where they said, move your hands and leg in unison to help keep your top half and lower half in sync. So they said I was bad at it and I needed to practice it more. So I took it to heart and it became a part of my delivery. And that's kind of how I got that. And a lot of people have told me that it ended up looking like how Clayton Kershaw kind of raises his hands and legs in unison. And, and I can kind of see it, but it's like I said, it was definitely not like a, definitely not like inspired from him or anything like that. And then pitch mix wise, uh, you know, my, I have a, I have a carry fastball, which basically means a fastball that plays well at the top of the zone. I have a depthy slider, which means it just plays like down off the fastball. Well, and then I have a depthy changeup as well, which has a little bit of arm side fade. And then, um, which has a little bit of arm side uh, fade, but mostly is depth off my fastball as well. And uh, I would say pitch mix wise, I think uh, I'm trying to think definitely like another fat, like a good, like for the fastball and like slider combination, like Clayton Kershaw, obviously he's a lefty. I'm a righty. Um, obviously uh, for the fastball slider combination, it plays pretty similar to how his, um, does and, um, his fastball and slider. And then for the changeup off, uh, of my fastball, I could say something, it's kind of like a split split change. So it's definitely like, uh, it's, it's not necessarily like a splitter, but it definitely, it plays similar to how like a splitter would, uh, would off a fastball. Like it's mostly depth off the fastball rather than like arm side run and stuff like that. The other thing about my changeup is that it's a little bit slower than a lot of other changeups. So Whereas I throw mostly 95 and, and whereas I throw mostly 95, my changeup is like right around like 80 miles per hour. Whereas a lot of changeups are probably a little bit closer. Like if someone's throwing 95, their changeups like 85 or so like that. So I have, a, it's a little bit slower, but I would say it plays pretty similar to like a splitter. If you see any guys that throw something like that. Yeah. Twins fans, when Matt says like a splitter, think of um, like Kenta Maeda's splitter. When we watch him, uh, mm. you know, when we watched him in, in 2020, a little bit in 2021, um, that kind of play. Is that is that kind of along the same lines, Matt? More yeah, of for sure, for sure. Yeah, yep. Yeah, definitely. It's definitely more – it's just, like I said, if, if this is my fastball – oops, sorry. If this is my fastball, like the changeup, it, it tails a little bit, but it's mostly depth down it plays down rather than like I'm getting like a lot of swing and misses from like the horizontal movement that you see a lot of people get a lot of horizontal movement on their changeup. Has your command, I'm curious because I, I remember and we had like a whole episode two years ago during the shutdown about like you and Cole and, and all these guys. And I was talking about the scouting reports and you were marketed as like, he's got three or four polished pitches, right? Has your command, have you had to refine your command with this velocity and with kind of not, I don't want to say newfound stuff, but just kind of a, maybe a different way of pitching. Have you had to refine your command or has it been there? Um, I definitely have always known kind of what I'm trying to do. I would say my focus has kind of become more refined from like trying to like paint corners and stuff like that to just really staying over the plate with everything. So not being too picky about like trying to throw the perfect pitch on like the outside corner, but making sure that my like trusting that my stuff is going to play up because it's a good combination. It's a good repertoire. And then just staying over the middle of the plate with it or not over the middle of the plate, but just like just staying within the zone with a lot of it. And um, so as the velo um, increased, like I definitely had to really pay attention to where I was throwing a pitch. So like I, I have to be very specific with like a location. So I have to pick out a spot on the catcher, but that spot on the catcher is always going to be right. Like pretty close to the center or like, the, like, the, like close to the closer to the middle of the strike zone than, than to like the edge of the plate or something like that. So it's uh, definitely something I've had to work on. I don't know if it's necessarily like the velo caused me to work on it more, but it's definitely, you always, you always have to be striving to be able to better that stuff. And I would say the biggest focus for command has really come with my changeup because that was a new pitch to me within the past year or two. 
that I've really had to hone in on like what, um, where I need to throw this pitch for it to end up a strike because it moves a lot. So where do I have to start this pitch for it to end up in the zone? And that was um, a big step forward for me this past year was I have a pretty good idea of that now. And now I feel more and more comfortable with that pitch and throwing for strikes. So you're, you're good starting any of those three pitches. Oh, Oh. Yeah, for sure. I would say like, it's, 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 it's a, it's a kind of a little bit of a, not weirder take, but it's, it, it, it makes sense. Like it's a, I feel very comfortable throwing any of these pitches for a strike. And like my kind of mentality when I'm out there on the mound is like, what can I get away with throwing right down the middle right now? And that's usually the pitch that I'll go with. And that's kind of how I think about like sequencing pitchers. So if like, I don't think if I, if I don't, if I think it's going to get shelled, if I throw it right down the middle, I'm probably going to go to a different pitch. So if I think like the fastball is going to get shelled in this situation, or if I think he's sitting slider, then I'm probably going to go to you the, the change up, the change up then or something like that. And then, or, or it could be the other way around. It was like, Oh, he's definitely sitting soft. I, I, I know if I just throw a, a fastball over the plate, the worst thing that's going to happen is a foul ball. And then, and then it also puts the fastball in his head and it sets him up for later in the at bat too. So that's kind of how I think. And that's kind of how I let those pitches play off of each other. Matt, who'd you, uh, who'd you watch growing up? Was it Astros Rangers and who was your favorite player? Uh, so I actually grew up with New York sports in the house. My dad, uh, my dad was born in New York. Um, he was a big New York sports fan. So he liked the New York jets, the New York Knicks, the New York Rangers, and then the New York Yankees for baseball is who I followed the most. And those and those are all the teams that I'm well, – I'm still big Jets. I'm still a big Jets fan. I'm a Knicks fan, and I'm a Rangers fan. I've kind of put the <laughs> Yankees on the side burner, but that's who I uh, – but that's who I've uh, – that's who I rooted for the most growing up. And that was just – and that was – and I've been a – and I was a Yankees fan from as long as I could remember. Derek Jeter was my favorite player growing up, and I, and I can tell you uh, – a lot of the players that a lot of the players that had an impact on me um, as I, as I got older and a lot of them were Yankees. Matt, I hope you are a part of the team that breaks that curse for the twins. As you, you know, <laughs> like watching the Yankees, watching the Yankees play yeah. the twins for so long. Uh, it's been painful for a lot of years, but Matt, thank you so much. I really appreciate you coming on. Um, good luck this winter getting back early in January, or you said it feels earlier than maybe it is. Yeah. Um, super excited to watch your pitch. I know Twins fans definitely are. Thank you so much. I'm um, beyond excited. Thank you so much for having me.